We're glad to know you're still there and uh, watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to go to the press and see uh, what the headlines for today are. And we have as our guest this morning, Mr. Tunde Kola Wole. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kola Wole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Okay. Yeah, t today we're starting with uh, Nature News. Nature newspaper leads with um, the uh, headline, Tinubu approves Ogun State's Special Agro Processing FTZ. Uh, that is the, the headline that is leading on the Nature newspaper. Um, uh, we're talking agriculture, we're talking uh, agro-processing uh, free trade zone in Ogun State. I I'd like your comment on this development. It's one crucial area that the present government requires to focus attention on. If you are going to save the nation from the impending uh, food uh, crisis, we already have our adults uh, step. The farmers can go to the farms because of insecurity. Electricity and farming fees have uh, skyrocketed. We also find that, that um, because of feeding animals, uh, poultry, pigs, and what have you, it's also very prohibitive now. Uh, the worsening situation, most of the agreed processing zones that we have in the past, and agreed with our entities, they all come at us. Because we have refused to focus attention on those things uh, you know, since they return to civil war, but even since the era of the military era, most of those institutions were created in the First Republic. And we have never bothered to add more to it to improve them, but to even create them. Serious new ones to meet the challenges of uh, the modern times. So, if the present administration is not trying to focus attention on those things, for me to create a uh, uh, Greek uh, processing zones in starting uh, to the state and then maybe we'll send it to other states and all that, yeah, it could be said to be a welcome development. But honestly speaking, I would have preferred a situation in which. All the other agri processing tools and agricultural facilities that are decaying all over the country, that we resuscitate them as a foundation for whatever it is that we want to do. A situation in which every, any, anybody comes into government, or when a new government comes into government, they begin to start from the scratch, as if nothing had ever been done in those areas in which they now want to start a government uh, from the scratch. Honestly speaking, fine. It kind of doesn't allow a nation to go, and the conscious of the history will not be able to monitor the trajectory of your development as a people. Most times, too many times, these things are done just for the government of the day to be able to take credit for them. And we say there should be incremental development. A nation doesn't develop by people wanting to create or make or establish one signature of a few process or so that that will be remembered or that will be done. Uh, that will be ascribed to them whenever they have uh, lost their uh, government. I am not too sure. We do respect to the presidency. But I think the presidency is the next step that we have to take now. What are they going to do? When farmers cannot do anything, when farmers cannot buy anything, when siblings are beyond the, the reach of the other uh, farmers, when um, uh, electricity, uh, farmers who require electricity for all sorts of things in their farm, no longer can have access to those things because, uh, because of electricity has gone up and uh, uh, we are. So these are my take on some of these things. As radical as those two guys might be, it will be like putting the cat before the horse, in humble opinion. Well, we do hope that um, farmers can, can produce these things that will be processed where they need to be processed and all that. Um, in, in the business NG, uh, newspaper, we have um, a small headline there that says Dangote slashes, I'm sure it's in almost every every newspaper, Dangote slashes diesel aviation fuel prices to 940 naira and 980 naira respectively. So diesel is 940, aviation fuel is 980 respectively. And and people seem to be very happy. Even the government is clapping for Dangote. Uh, what is your own opinion? What's your take? Well, uh, if you look at the manufacturers in the country today, 
the social media, their spokesperson, or their, their own boss man, or the apex body for the manufacturing association. They've come out to say that there is no way they can, they can continue to produce, except the prices of diesel, uh, petrol, electricity, and gas are brought down. And that is the only way in which they can produce in a very poor, profitable manner. So if Gangota is coming to the rescue of the country by reducing the cost of uh, of a diesel, and I think he has in the past also reduced the cost of a, a cement, the prices of a, a cement. And uh, what you read in the paper is that he may also go a little further to reduce the prices of uh, aviation fuel, uh, petroleum products, and other when they begin to produce uh, those. Uh, those will give a lot of relief. So the ordinary Nigerian person is being under the yoke of these political prices in which those products and services are about to be sold. But the question you want to ask yourself is this. Is Dangota doing this out of an economic reality that um, he can produce and make his profit uh, conveniently, having reduced the prices of all those things? Or is he just doing it to please the presidency, to please his friend uh, in Guam? Because you will recall when the prices of cement hit the roof. I, I think the ministers, or is it the presidency, had meetings with the cement uh, manufacturers in the country and other, and then prevail on them uh, to bring down the price of those things and more. This is what Gangote is doing, just born out of paternalistic distance and other. I would want to say that can not, it's not sustainable in the long uh, run. What is sustainable are prices that are born out of the cost of uh, raw material, the cost of producing, the cost of distribution and all that. And not just uh, uh, such taking to promote the kind of peace uh, that the people in government. I'm not an economist, but I want to wager and say that uh, if diesel or if the petrol, the raw material for producing diesel, petrol and water too, are being sold to Dan at the international market rate, as if they are supposed to be sold and dollar denominated and what have you. And need the price, I mean, I need the value of the naira. I still remain unstable. In fact, uh, this week it uh, further crashed and went back to almost what it used to be. Another, but it will not be profitable for Bangladesh to be slashing the prices of diesel and what have you, as he had done and uh, what have you. If he had done that merely uh, to please people in common, or because the raw material for producing those things have been sold to him as a subsidiary. Then, technically speaking, you can say that we have gone back to the regime of a subsidy. But a situation in which one individual, one manufacturer, we begin to subsidize the whole nation. I have my doubt whether that can be sustained in the long run. If I might fear, I would rather want to see a situation in which what you call the market forces will determine the prices of goods and services and not just uh, wins and capacity from manufacturers and then. Uh, a kind of a paternalistic relationship between politicians and the two businessmen. Okay. Um, let's move to the, uh, the Guardian newspaper. EFCC, uh, fraud allegations and money laundering is the headline, and that's the biggest headline there. EFCC intensifies manhunt for Bello, detains Sirica, freezes 300 accounts. Uh, what's your take? We've seen this drama about... Um, yeah, yeah, Bello, the former governor of Kogi State, uh, where he did not appear in court. He was supposed to be arrested, but they couldn't arrest him. Uh, EFCC is saying someone obstructed it. Some stories even say the sitting governor smuggled him out of the premises and so many other things. The aid to the, to the governor or former governor have been arrested and all that. Let's hear your take on all this drama happening. I appreciate the enormous challenges that the USCC is facing in the carrying out the responsibility to the Nigerian um, nation and regarding the integrity of the Nigerian economy. We've seen a nation of 200 million people with a myriad of uh, uh, challenges that we have in our hands. And then the minimal resources that the USCC and some other security or not other security agencies are about to work with. I don't blame really them at all. I think they do a human job for which you all should be uh, commended. But I must say that I have in my reservations in certain areas. That's a form of the that honestly speaking, I think the issue of um, the former governor of Kubiki has not been properly or diligently examined. I mean, look at the way the security agencies in some other parts of the world, uh, 
uh, handling situations situation like this. When you are dealing with a high profile uh, suspect, such as Bruno, you will have to deploy a lot of tax, a lot of uh, intelligence data and all that. Is it impossible to really even arrest Bruno? Why he was, I mean, why he was, I mean, why he's sleeping quietly? You know, there's a dream uh, uh, somewhere down in the country or in, uh, or in Abuja. It is impossible to go to Bruno's uh, club, social club that you are talking about. Is it impossible to even give signals to the security details of Bruno, the police, the DS, the civil defense and all that, for the USCC and all the other people to get to coordinate their feet to see my guys? I mean, um, I think that we managed to give him the new security details. So, 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 I left him. And then submit him to the USCC and what have you. Why we have not done this, uh, the ratchet a little bit? We rather we want to make noise uh, on the basis of this potential to be seen, to be doing this way. And I'm saying, it is not a rancorous noise that we make on the basis of this paper that will determine or that will be used at the end of the day to assess your effectiveness, to assess your, 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 your performance, to grade you as regards what you have scored in terms of uh, performance. So the USCC will require to do more of it, so without uh, all these newspaper uh, publicity, attending to arrest and prosecution of, um, of uh, suspects. The other area I would like to look at is, uh, as to do with the conflicting orders that came from us, there's another, I think, from the community type of, according to what we read, in the papers, uh, restraining the USCC from arresting uh, Belu, uh, Gandhi and other enforcing fundamental human rights uh, and what have you. That it could only be arrested uh, when there is another of the court uh, to that uh, effect. And then, so I want to think that the USCC ought to have respected uh, that uh, ruling of the court. Again, to complicate matter, I think the USCC also went to court to get another to arrest uh, Belu wherever it may be. All these things are totally unnecessary. The law establishing the USCC is very clear. The USCC doesn't need any order from any court to arrest any citizen. If they feel that that kind of a citizen has committed the, the, some uh, infractions and uh, what are you? So, uh, we are complicating matters and making it difficult to even do the justice. If in fact, in nine days, we have committed the crime. And don't you not remember that this kind of scenario has happened in River State before, in which a former government really went to court in River State and got a blanket injunction restraining the USC from ever arresting and then uh, prosecuting. Up to now, the USC can find it because it's not impossible to arrest a former government in of River State. The USC seems to have learned from that um, the River State uh, debacle and uh, not uh, play into the hands of the bill the way it would have to me that they have played into his hand with respect to this case. As for the different internet bank accounts that uh, you have talked about, and all that, I will still want to go back to what I had earlier on saying. And it is the fact that please, don't let us start making the I mean, publicity with regards to what, what, uh, what uh, accounts have been frozen. Uh, by the U.S. Things like we ought to have been done in a very discreet manner, and it is when you have uh, completed the investigation and you have the full evidence and facts to prosecute a person in court and murder, that to begin to let the public know the law about some of these things. And they ought to know when the case has been filed in court and murder. Because, honestly speaking, when you look at the Constitution, the Division of Criminal Justice Law, the Tradition or Act, or what I do, every suspect. If he presumes to be innocent, then if the court tries him and then convict him and sentence him and all that. So, he should have learned a lesson from this topic. And now, let's make the case. He uh, doesn't set the procedure too much. And he doesn't make the work of the USCC um, in the long run. So, these are my take on this. Yeah, well, let's see how it plays out. Uh, that's all I can say. Um, we, this other headline is. A small headline there, CBN to sell $16 million to BDCs at 1,021 Naira to a dollar amid fresh panic in FX market. That's on The Guardian. And uh, on the Punch newspaper, the headline is CBN releases more dollars as Naira weakens to 1,300 Naira. So... Uh, let's have your take on that. Naira weakens to 1,300 Naira, even when some people are saying it's just 1,200 
or some are saying it's less than 1,200 and all that. But um, the reality on ground, we don't know what it is. Uh, so now, B uh, Central Bank of Nigeria is releasing more dollars to BDCs. And I was asking the question, why is it that these dollars are not readily available at the regular banks so that you can just walk in there and there, there will be more regulation and all that? I don't know uh, what you think. Naira is crashing again, even though the crash is little. <laughs> And the Fibon government. He made a very important remark, which I would like to go back on. He said that the chairman of the Central Bank, of uh, Apex Bank, in any country, is one of the most difficult jobs uh, in the world. And I quite agree with him. The man is in charge of the responsibility of the job, and it's very difficult uh, to perform. Especially given the background of the circumstances in which the man is coming, in which the economy was in relation. At the time, he assumed responsibility as the chairman of the Central Bank of, of, of Nigeria. He's been, he's, he has had to begin a firefight as he became mayor, which is not an uh, easy task for, for, for uh, anybody. So, uh, from what I want to say, I am not comfortable just like I said with the USCC. With all this, I mentioned every week that uh, the future is going to hawk. Uh, the Naira and dollar for the social amount of money, and this is the quantum that um, uh, they will be, be, be selling and what are they? I think all those things could be quietly done, channel to their profit quota, which will have a dedicated uh, 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 platform on social media, on um, other uh, platforms and on the internet and what are they? And of course, communication with the different banks in the country and when they produce the change and all that. And to gather how much they will be selling some of the things. By the time you make the kind of huge announcement, which they make on a weekly basis or the about, you precipitate the kind of what I would describe as a scramble for the dollar. Because uh, people who speculate in this currency are more, when they hear some of these announcements, they begin to strategize and then they begin to scramble for the dollar. It's the view to making a profit or to make a key. Part of what the federal government or the CBN is saying. So let's do this in a very quiet way. I'm not too sure that other countries of the world begin to announce how much the dollar is going to be ox. These are these their own local currency or their national currency, the way and manner in which you do. I appreciate that they are doing this to avoid working. I know that because in the past, uh, people will get these dollars and rather than uh, sell it to the public or to those who require them, they will go and watch them, they will tell the, the, the people that they have not received any from the Central Bank of Nigeria. The CBN is doing this to cut the excesses of some of these people, but uh, you see, too long doesn't make a right. Uh, I would prefer that we do some of these things in a very quiet and more uh, intelligent uh, uh, manner. As we got to the crash of the fall of the Naira, uh, well, uh, it should be expected. What determines, I am not an economist and a woman when it comes to economic but now we need to understand the economy that it is a productive base of a nation economy that determines the value of its currency. If, for example, uh, prices in which a petroleum crude oil will be sold in the international market goes up. If, for example, Nigeria is able to pump out more crude oil and sell in the international market and make each amount of oil machine and bring it back to the country. If, if the people in the Niger Delta then disturb the, the, the petroleum activity in those areas, then we're able to pump more fuel and all that. If, for example, the manufacturers can produce more and all that, you don't need a cadeso for the price of the dollar or for the price of I mean, the value of the naira to go up. These are these um, uh, the dollars. Uh, and not the kind of firefight that we are doing now. Even the Mr. Cadeso has to know this. But uh, the CBS is really trying to, to show up the value of the Naira, to protect the Naira, to safeguard the Naira, to do a firefight and on behalf of the dollar and on behalf of the Naira. These are these the dollars and wallets. Who has the Naira about? The economic engineering or the economic thinking or whatever that they have been doing would appear to be like that. And I say this with due respect, that that is not sustainable. You can't be doing the kind of economic engineering or thinking or manipulation that you are doing, and you think that that will solve the value of the Naira for a long, long time to come. No, 
It is a productive base of market forces that will determine the value of the Naira at the end of the day. Take, for example, a country like China. At the time, who was uh, interested in the Chinese uh, currency and what have you? But you will not believe it. The Chinese currency is as competitive as the dollar in the international market today. Because China is producing, because China is manufacturing, because China is selling goods and services all over the world, because the economy of China is becoming as strong, or if not as strong as the American economy, because the Chinese economy would appear to be the economy that would be the strongest in the world in the, in the, in the, in the few years uh, uh, to come. That is what is showing us the value of the Chinese uh, currency. I think that is what should be true. Let's concentrate more effort on the productive base of the Nigerian economy. Uh, why we minimize this firefight to keep the value of the Naira? In the long run, I, I, I say this, it is not sustainable. It is not sustainable. And when you eventually catch up with Bumerang and all that, it is even going to be worse than, uh, than, uh, than, than it is today. So let uh, economic indices determine what to do, the value the Naira will have. These are these other foreign currencies. Let us show the let us show the value of the I mean, take off the value of the Naira using economic indices, uh, input in agriculture, manufacturers going back to their plants and all of you. Uh, the Niger Delta people and then they are coming to, 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 to be productive and to extract more oil in the Niger Delta and let the NMPC be able to sell more in the international market. Let us be able to guarantee food security. Take for example, if food is cheap all over the country and what have you, will you and I be talking about the value of, 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 of the dollar? I don't use the dollar and no longer have any child schooling abroad and what have you. So, the, the bulk of the Nigerian people are about only 90 percent of Nigerian people are not too concerned or they are not in the way directly affected by the value of the, uh, of the dollar. Those who are doing these challenges to us are the same men that you said they want to take up the value of the naira. They are the ones who are children abroad, who are children abroad, whose confusion must be paid in dollars. They are the ones who build houses in Banana Island, in the Korea, and make it a war of it. And asking tenants to pay in dollars and pound sterling a war of it. They are the ones who have established a school in which a children in primary school will be paying 42 million naira on an annual basis as a, as a, as a, as a school fee and what have you. The way to show the value of the naira is to look at those areas I have been. I have uh, talked about. These are going to be things computed on one single track of 42 million naira. At the end of the day, it is not naira that you used to pay. That school, sooner than later on, oh, the grant will be insisting that it should be paid either in naira, in dollar, or in past time. So, the NIA should be the one to solve the problem. But in stopping the, the, the appetite for dollar and other currencies, so as to be able to live with a future price. Uh, okay, um, let's move to the Daily Independent. Um, a small headline at the top right corner says Tinubu okays 20% palliative for traditional religious institutions. Tinubu okays 20% palliative for traditional religious institutions. Yes, let's hear you. Palliatives in the form of food uh, to be rooted through uh, traditional institutions and religious institutions. 20% of these palliatives. 20% of what? Palliative. Oh, okay, okay. Two traditional institutions? Yes, and religious institutions. Okay, see, that is uh, what is going to happen. What happened to the millions of men that were paid to that thing for workers to outfit to identify? Those who should uh, benefit from those uh, palliatives. What happens? Millions, I mean, millions of dollars were paid to that consultancy to be able to identify those um, uh, people and then be uh, able to channel those things to them where they may be all over the country. Then, uh, let's uh, say that uh, the traditional institutions all over the country, by and large, are respected and uh, most of them have only lived up to expectations. And when they, 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 they care for their people, if they don't care for their people, they wouldn't be care as traditional institutions and whatever. So my fear is this. If you begin to channel some of those things to the traditional institutions and all that, 
chances are that the politicians will politicize uh, the traditional institutions and the distributive process to the traditional institutions. And when you politicize the, uh, the that institutions and all that, which has remain one of the bedrock, one of the pillars for training this country, when the country is doing a lot of uh, a lot of process. I have said the time that number. Look at the many political cases that we are taking to our court. A lot of people may not realize it. All these political cases are for the court. We are presenting the court. And when we contest the court, which is one of the pillars of society, we are creating a lot of challenge, a lot of danger. We are weakening the system. So if we again begin to ask the political to the future, because we need to do things that ordinary way we should not do, things that can swear. They are made their reputation and they refer to the under which they come from law. When you are not letting that institution, I give you an example. We are seen in the past in which people saw food were kept in certain places and not in the warehouses for some of these public institutions and all. And they went in there to engage and use those places and all that. Because they never had the patience to wait for the time and place where those things are going to be distributed. If I can, some of these uh, food items. So palliatives are taken to the homes or to the palaces of these traditional institutions. And then our people who are hungry and hungry, they get those uh, uh, palaces and war at it. And then begin to do things and damage the institutions and then damage the palaces and war at it. What is going to happen? It's going to be a big deal and a snare from those traditional institutions. I we want to enjoy the government to please spare the, tradi the traditional institutions. <laughs> the, 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 the challenges. Uh, of the civilian palliatives to get more than from the street. It is like the bad institution that has endured over a long period of time. First, it is old and what have you. We should not do anything that is going to destroy that bad institution. They could recommend people. They know people in their communities and what have you. The civilian institution can compile the list of people within their domain that they think they should benefit from those palliatives. Just like you are nice, also they need to make recommendations. But I know this person who lives in those who so she are dead, he is indigent, his income is not enough to support, he doesn't even have any income I don't want to appeal to the government to please put him on the list of those who benefit from the palliatives and what are they? If uh, that is allowed and not that, it will be better than uh, the other thing that the Chinese institution should be doing to my door. Okay, um, uh, we've talked about this a, li a little bit. Um, uh, about Dangote reducing the price of diesel and jet A1. And the belief here in Daily Independent is that airlines set to reduce fares as uh, man or Manufacturers Association of Nigeria sees inflation easing. Do you also see this happening anytime soon, that airlines are going to reduce their price, their fares, and uh, inflation is going to ease as soon as possible? You can do that about it. When you look at the trajectory of our, our, our history, especially the aviation sector and all that, one of the biggest challenges that the aviation sector has always had in Nigeria is uh, to the fact that uh, get fear, the fear that uh, the airplanes use. Nigeria's uh, price is the highest in the whole of West Africa, if not the whole of Africa. And that has been a very huge burden on the uh, different airlines in uh, uh, Nigeria. Furthermore, Nigeria as big as it is, Having probably the biggest number of Raqqa in the whole of Africa, uh, I wouldn't know what the number of Raqqa is in South Africa and Egypt, but we have one of the largest fleet of Raqqa in, uh, in Africa and uh, in Africa. We, uh, we don't have a Raqqa, that is an aircraft maintenance plan. We are also a country like Ethiopia, which is only the half of our size. I think Ethiopia has about 110 million people in terms of population. We have a service to be a charging manga where the airplanes can, 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 can be deployed. We don't have to. So those things have always influenced uh, on the time. Let me see. This is not an experimental. If the price of the business come down and all that, there's no doubt about it that it's going to have some impact as regards to the rate of which uh, the airline sells at different tickets. Not just within the country, but the outside the country. But the question, like I asked earlier on, is this: Is that what I'm doing this based on economic reality, based on his interest, his uh, manufacturing cost, and then decision cost on profitability, or is merely just trying to please 
the people in government. Because you and I will remember, when Dr. Ambua had the head on to reach out a class, for some time ago, and after that class, all of them began to play to the gallery, wanting to build the government, so to be able to build the good book for the present to admission. If we do with those on wanting to build the government, then I'm not too sure that it's opportunity in the long run. But if we do with the country, it's possible. I was able to make it perfect and earn a good income, having to do the society of those things and all that. Then it should be sustainable and then to do a work on development. All of what we want to do is go down. The way I want to do this, I mean, the president of the time in the country today is very calm, easy, I mean, uh, with due respect and uh, so it doesn't happen. We can't go on like this without some, uh, 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 an impression, uh, sooner than later, uh, all over the place. Look at the cost of garlic, the cost of beans, and the cost of... A friend of mine was telling me the guy went to the market, and the food of a milk uh, for beans was being sold for 400 naira in the market and what have How many of us can afford the thing of um, a bean at uh, 400 naira in the market? And if you have a family of four or five who have to eat the bean, uh, I mean, underscore the number of things that you have to buy to be able to feed the family. And just uh, at uh, at uh, want a uh, uh, sitting at the table. So let's uh, not um, let's encourage Mr. Daniel to to do what he did. It is born out of a uh, uh, serious economic uh, and all that. But if it is the merely to play to the diary, I want to say uh, we are merely uh, uh, postponing the easy day. And when you postpone an easy day, by the day the easy day will come. Usually it comes like an old case. It gets worse and becomes uh, more and more people. Uh, because that is like a propaganda. And propaganda has its limit. But the type of propaganda is no longer effective. The consequences can be very severe. Okay. Um, let's go to. Okay, still on the daily uh, independence, uh, there another small headline. Uh, mm -hmm. On the Yahaya Bello case, anti corruption groups condemn EFCC's tactics, insist on due process. And then the writer is Kogi Assembly demands removal of wanted tag from Bello's name. Uh, so it's been happening, you know, <laughs> evasion of arrest and all that. Let, let me just hear what you, you think. <laughs> And the most will be by public institutions, even those institutions who benefit a lot from the order of the force. You know? We must uh, the EFCC ought to be the order of the force. So there is another of the force saying the EFCC from arresting and prosecuting the Yahoo uh, from now. The EFCC ought to be that order. What they needed to do is to go to the is to go to appeal to the federal High Court for the court to vacate uh, those orders. They can even go to the same court and get that order and then present superior arguments and then present facts and figures. Why that order should be set aside, having been procured uh, uh, by false pretenses or having been procured by including the court uh, to grant the order. Our court is sympathetic to the case of U.S. people. And I think that's true also. Because public institutions don't to pay court orders, then individuals should not be expected to pay court orders. And when public institutions and individuals begin to take losses to their hands by giving themselves up, the anarchy will set in, and then the society is in jeopardy. Hmm. Okay, um, let's take um, a, a, a another headline. Uh, this time it's from. Uh, uh, the Punch newspaper. We'll see whether we can return to the Daily Independent. But in the Punch newspaper, uh, we have uh, this um, uh, headline about uh, the Syrica is standing alone now. It's not standing with other th things. Syrica and Nigeria. Syrica goes on trial for eight billion naira fraud. We've heard that he's not even alone. Uh, his younger brother or his brother. I don't know whether younger or older brother is also roped into this 8 billion naira nigeria air that we saw uh landing in nigeria and disappearing at the same time so 8 billion naira and he's been arrested by the efcc would like to take uh you, what do you think okay. 
Yes. And I think they have had about one year to do that investigation. And the thing they now have sufficient facts and evidence to be able to, to, uh, to speak the former immigration minister as he got his attempt to float uh, Nigerian air uh, at the last minute when the Israeli government was expected was leaving government. But that would be a good uh, development. The truth of the matter is that time does not run out of infraction. The act of crime the may have been committed, either by individual or even by, by institutions and all that. The USCC would have been in a very good step to prosecution and what have they. But let us uh, uh, assume they have done the further investigation and they now have sufficient facts and all that. It's not that they will take the month of court on an old charge and then begin to amend and amend the. Uh, Whatever charges that they file against the man, because one year, two years, how we want to say it's sufficient to have gathered your facts and evidence to be able to prosecute the man. But then, um, when we look at our history as a people, most of these prosecutions of uh, former uh, public officers and politicians and others, have they ever used a uh, uh, dividend? Have they ever used any prosecutions and others? The mind will look in a way we take about one hundred and fifty calls to prosecute them for whatever infraction they may have committed in common. And most times the, the conviction rate is just about eighty five uh, I mean is just about ninety percent. That is the only time people get convicted part of the hundred that um that we take to court or to prosecute in court. The implication of that is that this country this is very good money for change a very, very bad debt. We usually will be chasing people after they have uh, stolen money in public offices. Whereas we want to uh, make sure we want to have presented them from a uh, in the first uh, uh, instance. It is difficult all over the world to stop people from uh, uh, stealing in the public spaces. Look at what has happened in Indonesia. I think it's Indonesia. In which a woman banker has been um, uh, tried and uh, uh, sentenced and convicted, uh, uh, sentenced to death for investing billions of, uh, of their nation's uh, currency. So that happens all over the world. It is not a cool to Nigeria alone. But uh, I would have to say a more proactive manner in which we put um, a lot of measures on ground to stop people from stealing. Rather than begin to chase them after they have stolen, because after they have left government, they become very difficult to to prosecute. Why is it difficult? Corruption in this uh, uh, part of the world is an obstacles. Uh, one person may be finger for the corruption, but thousands of other people would have benefited from its corruption activities. So when you want to prosecute that kind of person, the other, the thousands of others that have benefited, in the rally and the world will stand up and begin to, to fight and begin to do a manner for things to make sure that the position is, um, is uh, frustrated. That is why it is only very, very difficult to really prosecute uh, the politicians in this country because they spread the corruption. A lot of people benefit from the uh, corruption. And now, sometimes that number is clean. Prosecuting people is just one way of fighting corruption. The most fundamental way to fight corruption if you to ask ourselves, why is it that when people go into government, they begin to steal money, they begin to do what they're expected to do? One is that uh, a lot of people are culpable in this area, a lot of us are culpable. Once our people are in government, we begin to see it as our own opportunity to really have a share of the national case. We begin to put a lot of demands for those politicians and public officials and what have you. We want our people to be to be paid. We want um, a school of our to be paid. We want to eat uh, three square meals in their different homes. We also want them to buy house cars and do all manner of things. That we know their salaries can really not um, uh, support. The banks will also go to digital and begin to offer them all sorts of facilities, which they know in dollars, in banks, and in all manner of currencies, which the bankers know that their salaries can really not um, uh, support. 
we also engage with some of these Mazia because they want good schools for their children. They also want to have a roof over their roof and over their head when they have left common. So if we begin to provide or make it possible for the civil servants and personnel to be able to, another Nigeria to be able to afford homes very cheaply, if the public schools are good and nobody requires to spend money to send their children to the private schools and all that, if your cities are working fine, then you don't have to start looking for going to India to do transplant for your wife and children and all that. I am sure some of these corruptions are talked about with the minimal reviews are not at the top. Why do we push to people don't see? Maybe because they want to hold the money to keep it under their bed. Uh, like, um, like, uh, which is something I like, uh, uh, nice ass, uh, of all, they still because they want a good life for themselves and their children. They want to move over their head when they have left the government. They want to be able to buy a car or a cycle or whatever to be able to commit around in a different manner. So, if the public transports are working fine and they are clean, they are neat and what are they? Why do people need to buy, buy a car? I have not driven a car in the last uh, 10 years and all that. Most times I do with public transport and all that because I think uh, it's cheaper for me, which is uh, more, uh, more convenient. But I'm sure a lot of Nigerians, I also see that it's some of the uh, exercise. And I'm sure a lot of Nigerians who also will not mind doing what I do on a daily basis uh, instead of uh, putting their hands in the... In the and the only cost for the nation. So, if you have a million years to all over Nigeria, and we still need this gap in the body policy, we still don't address the reason why people still public funds are not. We really do not care how it's going to work as it got decided to gain corruption. Okay, let's take a final one uh, <clears throat> from the punch before we wrap it up. Uh, 50,000 schools listed for federal government's uh, safe school scheme. That is the, the headline there. 50,000 schools uh, listed for federal government's safe school scheme. I don't know what you think. It strikes me, just, it just strikes me like another band A, band B kind of thing. 50,000 schools. 50,000 schools listed for federal government's safe school scheme. Oh my God. I still haven't cut it. Sorry? I still haven't cut it. I still haven't cut it. You are talking about schools and federal government. Yes, 50,000 schools have been listed for federal government's safe school scheme. Oh, okay, okay. I, I find that very funny. Is there any school in Nigeria that should not be safe for our children? That are many capturing and just 50,000 schools all over the country. For God's sake, the government shouldn't be saying that kind of a thing. Our children are the same, they are all at the same level. They are all important. They are precious in our eyes. We should be able to make the school safe for all our children without discrimination. And if the government does all that and all that, this is the military policy of not adopting 50 schools all over the country for safety and all that. That would be running against the grain of the concern. I say that there should be no discrimination against any Nigeria, whether they be a child or a man, or a man or a woman. All our schools should be designated and should be made safe, not just by the federal government, but by the state government and by the federal government. Uh, just like, uh, with due respect, I think the local state people have been doing a very good job with regard to safety in the different schools and all that. And that is why you don't have issues of kidnapping and all sorts of, uh, I mean, autism and other malfeasances in uh, schools around the country. That is the template that we should adopt for the different states of the different local government and all over the country and not uh, defining those 50 schools. <laughs> of the protection. It's a pretty nice. And the uh, yeah. school premise. And these the thousands of other was all about the country they are all protected. Uh, well, like I said, it just struck me when I saw it like it's another band A kind of thing coming up now where people are segregated uh, into band A, band B for, for power, which everybody needs. 
it's left for the person to be able to buy as much as they can consume and or they can afford and you let it go you don't say some people should deserve 20 hours and others will deserve two hours and others will do I, I don't know how that that works in the in the in the minds of the people who make the policies now 50,000 schools in a country of over 200 million uh, people there are bound to be millions and millions of schools and then you're selecting 50,000 what happens to the rest is the same question I was just asking but at this point, we would like to thank you, Mr. Kolaole, for coming on the show and sharing your thoughts on the headlines that we have on some of our national news. We will again interrupt the supply of electricity and the power to pay and order. For God's sake, we are running out of the constitution. And that tariff, uh, that uh, tariff uh, bank, ought to be challenged in court. Um, by the consumer protection agency, and if it is not challenged by the consumer protection agency, then ordinary citizens can do what to call the class action. They will get themselves together and sue the people. Okay, uh, we've lost the audio of Mr. Tunde Kolawole, but he was bearing his mind on the issue of band A, band B, and all that in power, in power, gener power sharing in the country. Uh, a lot of us are not comfortable with that, but that's the reality on ground right now. And he's suggesting that is even a, a case that could be uh, taken to court and the discourse and NECA, whoever brought that policy, should be sued. Uh, but will Nigerians take that uh, responsibility and do what they're supposed to do? Or we are just waiting and complaining in our little closets? Oh, well, we'd like to thank Mr. Tunde Kolawole for coming on the program this morning and sharing his thoughts. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be joined by our guests that will be talking on our only hot topic for the day. Stay with us. <music>